Hey everybody, Jesse Nyberg here. I'm a graphic designer from Los Angeles, and like most of us, I post a lot of my content on the Instagram app. However, it can be pretty hard to find and grow an audience on there. It actually took me about five years to grow my first 1,000 followers on the app. However, I'm gonna show you how in the last six months, I grew my account from 1,000 to over 11,000 at the time of recording this video. So I hope you enjoy some of these tips and you can get some use out of them. Let's get into it. So I'm sure you've heard this before, but in 2021, by far the most important thing you can do for growth on Instagram is posting Instagram Reels. If you don't know about Reels, it's basically like Instagram's copycat version of TikTok and they just push them so much more than normal content in the algorithm. Like some of the reels I posted have got insane views and likes and it's only a fraction of that in the normal content I post. And I know a lot of us as designers, we like posting still images or maybe we're not too much into animation and I can get that, but we're no longer a photo sharing app or a square photo sharing app. It's kind of almost essential these days to create video content, even as a graphic designer, if you want your page to grow. As a graphic designer, you may think, oh, I only post still images. There's not a lot of content I can do for reels, but it's actually not that hard to think of ideas. For example, I've done videos about some of my favorite fonts and a lot of people that are unfamiliar with typography or fonts in general really love that stuff. I've done videos of me showing how I created some of my designs. They're not like tutorials so much, but kind of just like cool little like cinematic things of me recording my screen, like here, here, here. And then you kind of do a big reveal at the end, the finished design. Another thing you can do is just straight up tutorials, short bite-sized little things in Photoshop or Illustrator that may not be suitable for longer platforms like YouTube. I see a ton of this stuff on Reels and TikTok and it does really well. Especially if you have a specific style that tons of people want to replicate, you can benefit a lot from showing some of your process and how they may do it. So definitely if you take anything from this video, try to post a couple Instagram Reels, even if it's once a week or so, it'll really help your page grow. My next tip for helping grow your page is just be active in the community, engage with other people in your niche. Whether your niche is logo design, branding and identity, UI, or just graphic design in general, be involved in the community because a lot of times that stuff's reciprocated. Things you can do to start getting involved in the community is comment on people that you follow's posts, be engaged, write genuine responses if they're asking questions in their captions. Also, you can comment and like and save on other stuff in the explore page that looks similar to the stuff you like or people you want to be associated with. Also, if anyone that you know just posts cool stuff on their stories or part of their stories, start some conversation and just kind of be active because you want to be in front of people's eyes. And also you want to show that you care about other people's stuff too and not just there to post. If you want to go the extra mile too and really get involved in your niche, look for some people who have some similar styles to you or stuff you like and try to create some collaborations with them. That stuff can expose each of you to each other's followers and you'll probably end up making some cool shit out of it. Me, for example, not only my design work, but the podcast that I do, I've been posting the clips of on there on Instagram, and it's helped a lot with reaching not only my own audience, but the audience from each of those designers' followers. And after we usually record them, I feel like we have a more genuine connection and we're a lot closer to being friends than we were before the episode. So another thing you can do is Instagram provides you a shit ton of room for writing captions. So make use out of it. Try to write engaging captions or at the very least, ask some questions that a ton of people will have opinions on or answer in the comments. I feel like a ton of designers, myself included in the past, tend to get in the habit of just wanting to post their work and let it speak for themselves. And I get that. But the caption is pretty powerful and you can use it in a lot of different ways. Not only can you ask questions, but you can also just write how you were feeling. Write your process when you were going through this piece, right? If you want any feedback. Talk about any problems you ran into when designing this or if you had any certain thought process and if you want other opinions on it. Even if people don't agree with some of the things you're saying, anything that creates engagement or comments in the comment section is pretty good and it'll just help you overall. So make full use out of the caption section break it up in a nice digestible way and write things that people will want to engage with. So if we're purely talking about trying to keep up with the Instagram algorithm, I found that this is probably one of the most important things you can do, and that's post consistently. Obviously, consistency means something different to everyone depending on what time of day you post, what type of content you post, and all other sorts of things. 
If you can afford to post every day and the content allows for it, that's great. If you can only post five times a week, that's great too. Three times, two times, whatever it may be, just keep it consistent. Also, if you ever feel like you can't keep up or you're falling behind, I think bulk processing helps. I know everyone can get very excited and you want to post your work right away as you complete it, but if you want to keep up a consistent schedule, it's nice to bulk process. And by that I mean design a bunch of stuff in a certain day or keep it all stacked up that way you can break it out over following weeks. It really helps and allows you to feel like you're posting a lot and being involved without getting burnt out. So don't get too wrapped up in when or how many times you post, but just look into your analytics, see what time's the best to post. Come up with a consistent schedule and try to stick to it by bulk processing and planning out your content in an effective way. I think this next one's really important and it's something that took me a while to learn. You have to stop being so precious with the stuff that you post on Instagram. At the end of the day, you're a designer, this is just one social media app, and it's not your portfolio. So just don't be afraid to share stuff, create album art for fun, post stuff in process, post stuff you want feedback on, post pictures of you with some prints you did. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this is just one app, like I said, and everything doesn't have to be client handoff ready. I think I've done this a lot in the past, and I know a lot of designers who get very stressed out thinking everything has to be perfect before it goes out online. But if you spend all your time contemplating how perfect something can be and tinkering with something, you're never gonna end up being happy with it and you're never gonna post stuff online and no one's ever gonna really know what you have to offer because you were so precious with every little thing that you wanted to put out. This next one kind of ties into the last one. Every post doesn't have to be 100% finished design work. There's tons of other things you can post on the platform. If you feel that you're not growing enough or your audience isn't engaged and you don't have enough finished design work to post, then you can try some of these things. One of the things you can try is just post updates about your life. Believe it or not, a lot of people are interested in what you're doing, whether it's good or bad, or they're just nosy. This also makes you more personable and takes you away from just being a logo profile picture behind the screen somewhere. Some other examples is you can post some behind the scenes stuff or little pictures of your studio or your workspace, some stuff that can show you working in progress. I feel like that, th that stuff is always interesting and a ton of people like to check it out. I also see a lot of people do educational content. I think it's a little bit saturated when it comes to like carousel swiping stuff, but you can create video content that's teaching people things, giving your opinion on a certain issue or anything related to the design community that you think can offer value. So this one has to do with the shit ton of features that Instagram stories has to offer that a lot of people don't end up using, but I've noticed are very great for engagement and messing with the algorithm. Use all the features this Instagram story section has to offer. There's polls, questions, music, GIFs, all that stuff. Anything that creates engagement and gets people to stick around for even a second longer looking at your stuff is good for the algorithm and good for growth and reach on your Instagram. I've noticed when I use things on my story that are interactive, the views are exponentially higher than when I just post a regular photo or something from my feed. If you need ideas, try doing a Q&A to engage with your audience. A ton of people want to ask you questions, I'm sure, or even ask a Q&A and an opinion on a specific subject. If you take a normal photo, throw one of those little music tags on it and share some of your favorite songs. I've done that and a lot of people reply just because they didn't know I liked this certain artist and then we get along chatting about that. Also, one of my favorites is polls. Ask a question, simple poll, something's easy to digest because some of these will get hundreds and hundreds of votes even if you only have like five or six hundred followers. It's pretty insane. If you don't have anything specific to do for polls, there's also a trick you can do. I actually learned this from my friend Elliot is a cool guy. He showed me this trick. If you just post a poll, it can literally say yes, no, like bing bong, like whatever it may be, any two random things. Post that on your story with whatever content you're trying to promote. People will just click on it for whatever reason. I feel like it's just human nature and it generates way more story views and engagement. So next time you're posting something you want to get out there, just put a little poll with it and just write like whatever you want, yin yang. Someone will click the random option and it'll tell Instagram this content is worthwhile and push it out to a bigger audience. All right, this is a short one, but I think anyone should hear it. Stop using the black background in 2021. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you do. 
it's the black background with the poster on it. I think it's played out. And I think nowadays it's just reserved for pretty much like the reshare pages like City Soda Club or Digital Archive. I'm not saying you should stop using it completely, you know, you can try it on the second or third slide of your carousel. But I think as the main image in the feed, it's hard to stand out and it blends in with a lot of other stuff on the app. Nowadays, I recommend using portrait orientation. So I usually make a lot of my designs in 16 by 20 at 300 DPI, and then I resize it for Instagram at 1080 by 1350 pixels. So shout out to my buddy Nikogs. He kind of put me onto this trick. The reason portrait is good is it takes up more real estate on the person's screen. That way, when someone's scrolling, you take up more of that section rather than two square posts. It'll be yours all at once. And it really seems to work out and I think it gets a lot more engagement. The designs are a lot larger so you can see them in more detail. And I think it just is an overall better look than some of the black background or square photos. Another thing you can do is create carousels whenever it's applicable. Anytime you can post more than one image, the better. If you're posting a finished logo, maybe show some other parts of the brand identity that people can swipe through or some photos that have to go with the brand. If you're posting a poster, show the normal version, show a couple alternate versions, show a version with the black background on it if you have to, show some zoomed in, you know, like detailed shots. Any of that stuff to make people look at the post longer will definitely help out. Not only does it make the content more rich and engaging, but it provides more opportunity for someone to stay on the post for longer and potentially engage with it. So this is my last tip. And on the Instagram app, what you can do is hide your like count. This is probably the most important tip besides the Instagram reels, because at the end of the day, likes are just a vanity metric and they were created to make you want to check your phone like a slot machine and try to get that next fix of, oh, this post did good, this post did bad. When you hide the like count, it will overall improve your mental health because you won't be comparing certain designs to others. And I think at the end of the day, it improves the quality of your work. And as a byproduct of that, you probably will grow on Instagram because you won't be influenced by every little thing and every metric. And you'll just be creating the best stuff that is genuine to you and you think people will like. So for the sake of your development as a designer, just hide the like count. It'll overall improve your quality of life and help you create cooler content in the long run. If you want to connect with me on Instagram, it's at Permanent Glue. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Peace.